Reaction Beanie Yo 437. Dang that, that neighborhood. My brothers and sisters. Another Saturday, another time to go back to one of my favorite YouTubers. And the man is AJ from The Y Files. The Y Files Saturdays, y'all. And the title of this video is so interesting to me. This topic is so interesting. Mysteries Beneath the Ice, The Secrets of Antarctica. Now, for the past couple of years, y'all, I've been like, man, it's some ish going on in that article that they not telling us. Like, it's really some secrets there, man. And it can range from aliens to paranormal to an unknown civilization that lived there or an unknown animal species that may live there or... The, the damn government might be having some secret experiments going on there like it's just out of all the continents y'all north america south america asia africa europe australia antarctica it is that one continent that just seems like it's very secretive like it's some ish going on man i don't know y'all i'm not gonna even go on a crazy rant before we get into the video but as y'all can see i'm very excited so get into the video so that's what we about to do. But before we do that, my brothers and sisters, y'all know what y'all got to do. Get whatever you might need. Get what you need, please. We back to AJ from the Wi-Fi house. Y'all got what y'all need. Y'all ready to go? Then let's go. This episode of the Wi-Fi files is brought to you by Timu. Antarctica has been the source of high strangeness for a long time. Rumors of UFOs and alien bases go back to the 1930s. Hitler wanted to build bases there. Some people think he did. Operation High Jump arrived in 1946 with a heavily armed U.S. Navy fleet. Their mission was to extend American sovereignty over Antarctica. The mission was supposed to take six months. Instead, it lasted six weeks. The operation ended because of poor weather. At least, that's the official report. Eyewitnesses said aggressive flying, disc-shaped craft chased the Navy out of the area. In 1985, a medevac flight was forced over a no-fly zone near the South Pole. The crew saw a giant hole in the ice, as wide as a football field. When the crew returned to base, they were debriefed, not by the Navy, by men in suits. One of the crewmen said they had the typical DC look. In the 1990s, Navy flight crews reported silver disks zipping over mountain peaks at impossible speeds. The crews were told to never speak of it. In 2003, a Navy SEAL on a covert mission found an ancient structure protruding through the ice. It was made of something that wasn't quite metal but wasn't quite stone. It was warm to the touch, and on that structure was a door. In 2018, scientists in Antarctica launched weather balloons to study cosmic rays coming from space and hitting the Earth. They found cosmic rays, as expected. But what they didn't expect, the cosmic rays were coming from something two miles underneath the ice. There are witnesses who have seen things, heard things, and felt things that should not exist in Antarctica. Yet, they do. Whatever's down there, we're not supposed to know about it. But one thing's for sure, something very strange and very important is happening at the bottom of the world. Get whatever you may need. AJ will hit commercial, y'all. But man, just the intro. Listen, did y'all hear all those different 
uh, reportings and sightings throughout the years since 1930s, man, that people have made. I'm telling y'all, man, there's some ish going on in Antarctica. And if if I had to give my two cents about what I would think if I had to lean towards one way, I would say that it has to do with aliens, UFOs, something like that, y'all. That would just be my 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 leading theory or conspiracy or whatever. But I know it's some ish going on, man. I don't know if it's beneath the ice or above the ice in the skies, but it's something freaking going on, y'all. Let's take it back right here and let's go. Uh, you know what? Uh, let's do one more for safety. Everybody, back to one. In November 1995, a Navy flight engineer who wishes to be known as Brian was part of a U.S. Navy C-130 crew. The plane flew low circles around Marie Birdland. This was an area in the southwest part of Antarctica where 15 scientists set up camp. The plane was dispatched from McMurdo Base, a few hundred miles east of camp. The protocol is for scientists to radio every day and report their status. McMurdo hadn't heard from the science team in a couple of days. That was bad. The scientists were from the National Science Foundation, and their mission was routine. Study weather conditions, take ice samples, note wildlife, that sort of thing. They had no reason to wander away from camp. Even if they did, they'd be dead within an hour anyway. The C-130 flew in tighter and tighter circles. The crew could easily see the camp. The weather was clear and visibility was good. They could see the huts, fuel tanks, some equipment, snowmobiles were lined up, everything seemed to be in order. A C-130 Hercules is a four-engine turboprop. It's big, it's loud. If there was a problem, this is the point where people should be popping out of huts and waving their arms, but nothing. Mm. The rescue crew landed and took a look around. 15 scientists were dropped off here about a week ago. They had enough supplies to last a month, but nobody's here. There's no tracks, no signs of anything. The crew checked the radio. It was working fine. They radio their commanding officer at McMurdo. There were no people, no bodies, no signs of a struggle. It's like they just vanished. What do we do? The orders came back. They were obvious. There's really nothing you can do. Fly no. one last search pattern and return to base. So the C-130 made a few wider circles to see if there's any sign of the science team. There was nothing. After an hour or so, they flew back to McMurdo. The missing scientists were a mystery, but Antarctica is a dangerous place. People do die there from time to time. Anything could have happened. But over a week later, the C-130 crew gets an urgent command, immediately return to the Marie Birdland camp. The scientists somehow are back. They just radioed in and they were in a panic. They want to get out of there and they want to get out right now. What the hell? Did the scientists get freaking adopted by, by aliens? I'm talking about this a group of people going missing too, y'all. Not just one person, not just two, but a group. I think AJ said 15 of them. They went miss, missing. The people came looking for them, scoured the, the land where they should have been at. They missing. No sign of no struggle, no nothing. It's like they just disappeared and now all of a sudden they just reappear. Man, that is freaking crazy, y'all. This is going to be a crazy one, man. And I'm on 100 right now, so I'm, I'm very excited, as y'all can see. Wow, man. Antarctica is one of Earth's most isolated and unexplored places. Over 98% is buried beneath ice sheets that are two and sometimes even three miles thick. Despite extreme weather and limited access, discoveries are being made in Antarctica that hint at extraterrestrial activity, advanced technology, and lost civilizations hidden under the miles of ice. Recent satellite images reveal several pyramid and pyramid-like structures poking through the icy landscape. The official explanation is that these are natural rock formations, but there's one pyramid built with precise geometry, with each side lining up perfectly with true north, south, east, and west. Something like this wouldn't occur in nature. This looks like intelligent design. 
I ain't gonna lie, they don't look like just regular earth formations to me. Them look, I ain't gonna say they look exactly like pyramids, but it looked like somebody built them. It may have been a long, 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 long time ago, but it looked like somebody or something. I'm not even just talking about humans. I'm talking about aliens. Something built that. I don't know, y'all. Let's go. One enormous 1.2 mile wide pyramid was found, and it could be the oldest on Earth, suggesting all others were styled after it. Is this another hint that an ancient race built these monuments to generate energy? And this takes us back to the story of Tesla, trying to create free, unlimited wireless energy with his Wardenclyffe Tower experiments. He attempted to use technology that may have been used in the Great Pyramid of Giza long ago. Tesla pyramid link below, human. According to the Knights Templar, the true purpose of each pyramid is to store an Ark, just like the Ark of the Covenant. They claim there were 10 of these arcs scattered around the world that, when connected, generated unlimited energy for everyone on Earth. Knights Templar, link below. 90 million years ago, Antarctica was a rainforest. We have core samples to prove it. That's not controversial. Geologists claim Antarctica has been frozen and uninhabited for over 12 million years. So who's building pyramids beneath hundreds or thousands of feet of ice? Well, nobody. But what if Antarctica had a warmer climate more recently than 12 million years ago? Much more recently. Mm. The Pinkerton map drawn in 1818 was the most accurate in the world. Well, almost. If you look at the southern hemisphere on the Pinkerton map, nothing exists, just open sea. Now that makes sense. Antarctica wasn't discovered until 1820. It wasn't confirmed to be a landmass until 1840. But older maps show Antarctica not as a giant frozen continent, but as a land free of ice, a land where plants and animals lived. And these maps go back to the 1500s. In 1513, the Piri Reese map was compiled. Piri Reese? Piri Reese. what I say? <laughs> the Piri Reese map shows the coastline of Antarctica and the animals living there. The Orontius Phineas map is dated 1531. The entire continent of Antarctica is there, and there's no indication of ice at all. It shows mountain ranges that we know are there. The Piri Reese map only shows the coastline of Antarctica, but the Orontius map shows interior features of the continent. And mm. now because of satellite imagery, we know those features are there. They're just covered under miles of ice. If you sailed to Antarctica during the 1500s when these two maps were drawn, you'd find exactly what you'd find now. Nothing, a frozen wasteland. But that's not what the maps show. Why? Because these maps are based on much older maps. But how old is the big question? And it's a question that mainstream scientists don't want to answer. Because the last time parts of the coast of Antarctica were free of ice was at least 6,000 years ago. The human race was not supposed to be sailing the globe back then. But the Orontius Phineas map shows the entire continent free of ice. How could this be? Because it's based on a map that was drawn not 6,000 years ago, but 12,000 years ago. And the reason Antarctica wasn't covered in ice? Well, it wasn't at the South Pole. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. And I know I might sound, sound dumb to some of y'all out there, man. But hey, that's why y'all love me. Because I just keep it real on what I be talking about. Um... I never, like, considered the fact that at one point Antarctica wasn't covered in ice. Like, it wasn't a cold environment. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't all frozen over. It was at one point a habitable place just like where you at right now and I'm at right now. You know what I'm saying, my brothers and sisters? I, that, that thought never came to my mind. Like, whenever I always thought about Antarctica, I would just think about the, the, the freaking South Pole. You know what I'm saying? Like, one of the coldest places on Earth just freaking frozen all of it and it's so crazy when you think about that so once you think about that it was at one time it was not frozen like that and plants and animals was there man listen man ain't no telling what the hell up under that damn ice i'm telling y'all man it might be some freaking skeletons from humans or uh animals possibly aliens up under that ice y'all i don't know man that article is so freaking interesting let's go Charles Hapgood was a Harvard-educated historian and explorer. 
His radical theories about Earth's geologic history made him famous and controversial. Hapgood believed that Antarctica had a temperate climate not too long ago, and living there was an advanced ancient civilization. Atlantis? Don't get ahead of me. Sorry, sorry, I'm excited, go ahead. So there's a civilization living on Antarctica, but it's not at the South Pole. At least most of it isn't. Remember, Antarctica is a huge continent. There's plenty of land for a civilization to exist, as long as the continent's not too far south, which it wasn't. But suddenly a crustal displacement violently relocated Antarctica into frigid polar latitudes 12,000 years ago. Hapgood believed evidence indicated that portions of the planet's surface could shift dramatically along the molten inner layers. This could conceivably transform entire continents virtually overnight. Hapgood also used the Orontius Phineas map to help support his theory. Not only is Antarctica free of ice, it's not in the right place. Antarctica has shifted 1,000 miles away from the South Pole. That's a polar shift of seven and a half degrees. Hapgood said the shift could have happened in less than a week, maybe even in a single day. If Hapgood's theory is correct, the destruction would have been catastrophic. If Antarctica suddenly traveled a thousand miles toward the South Pole, any civilization would be destroyed and the layers of ice would start building immediately. The crust floats on the mantle, and tectonic plates are always in motion. They move away from each other, they collide with each other, but this process takes millions of years. What could possibly cause the Earth's pole to shift seven and a half degrees in a single day? Know, well, in 1974, right? Italian naval engineer Flavio Barriero published A Civilization Under the Ice. He proposed that the remains of a lost civilization may lie under the ice of Antarctica. That's what I was just talking about, y'all, man. Like, I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Just from these first 14 minutes and 49 seconds of this video, I can comfortably say I believe there were humans at some point in history. How many other years we got to go back, my brothers and sisters? There was humans. There was a civilization living in, a, in on Antarctica, in Antarctica, whatever. It, 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 it just make perfect sense, man. Think about it. I already went through the, all the continents. Every continent, there are people living on, man. Civilizations. So you mean to tell me Antarctica ain't have a civilization back when it was very habitable, just like where we live? Shit. I'm sorry, y'all. That, that's not a theory. That is just common sense to me. Let's go. He says that Antarctica had a temperate climate home to a thriving civilization. Then the entire continent was suddenly thrown to the South Pole due to a major impact event. Younger Dryas, here we come. Yeah, it seems like every episode of The Y Files ends up here. If there was a giant asteroid impact between 12 and 13,000 years ago, it could have caused a shift in the Earth's crust. We know something about 12,800 years ago suddenly caused the Earth to warm. Not warming melted the Earth's ice sheets, and sea levels rose hundreds of feet. What if another result of this impact was a shifting in the Earth's poles of seven and a half degrees? Then suddenly, the Orontius Phineas map makes perfect sense. But yeah. that leaves the biggest question of all. Yeah, but who drew the map? Right. Clearly, whatever civilization drew the map was highly advanced. The Orontius map shows features that you could really only see from the air. All of this does fit nicely with the story of Atlantis. The island nation, the advanced people, the sudden cataclysm. Every chronological event lines up perfectly. So what happened to the civilization when miles of ice started piling on top of their cities? Where did they go? Well, they didn't go anywhere. They're still down there. Ooh, what a thought that is. Hey, I ain't, hey AJ, he, he on to something with that, though, man. This dude is so amazing, y'all. If y'all don't like this shit, then I don't know what's wrong with you, man. This man is amazing, y'all. But yes, man, Atlantis could have been on Antarctica. That's what it, that is like a perfect place. And that's why we don't know what's going on. <laughs> like, 
Jesus Christ, man. Let's just go. I'm loving it, y'all. Like McDonald's. I'm loving it. Brian's C-130 rescue team mobilized out of McMurdo Base and was on the ground at Marie Birdland Base in less than two hours. When the plane landed, the crew saw that the scientists had haphazardly packed all their gear on pallets and were eager to get the hell out of there. The mm. science team boarded the aircraft in absolute silence. The crew asked them what was wrong, are they okay, is there anything they could do to help? The scientists just stared in silence almost catatonic. They were clearly in shock. The crew offered them food and hot coffee. Silence. From wheels up to wheels down is two hours, and nobody uttered a word. When the C-130 landed at McMurdo, the scientists were told they were going on another plane. For some reason, they didn't want to move, or couldn't. Someone had to go into the plane, physically unbuckle and remove each scientist from their seat. These people clearly saw something and were suffering from PTSD. They walked like zombies to the other plane and they were gone. Their research gear was placed in an empty storage facility and locked. The rescue crew was told not to go in there. The equipment was quarantined. The gear would stay locked and guarded until transported to a different location. Nobody knew it then, but that gear would eventually be taken to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio. If you know your UFO lore, you know that one of the places recovered craft go is Wright-Patterson. Wright-Patterson was also the headquarters of Project Blue Book, the Air Force UFO investigation unit. Anyway, the C-130 rescue crew was called into the commander's office. Inside the office were two men in plain clothes who had just arrived from Washington, D.C. Men in black. Yep. They told the crew that they would never speak of this incident. Not the missing scientists, not the equipment, not the location of their camp, nothing. None of this ever happened. The crew flight engineer, Brian, was fine with this. This wasn't his first keep your mouth shut meeting. He had this very same meeting in this very same room about 10 years earlier. Mm. But that first meeting wasn't about people and equipment on the ground. It was a meeting about what Brian saw in the sky. I gotta keep it real about this too, y'all. The more I just think about it, man, the men in black might freaking exist. And I'm not talking about Will Smith. I'm talking about like a real men in black people who would come to people who have had alien encounters and be like, don't tell nobody what the fuck you saw. Like, I don't know, man. Like, it, that shit might be real, y'all. You know how movies like to tell us about real life in a roundabout way and we might we have watched men in black i love the first one the second one was a great sequel the third one i didn't really like like that i feel like they didn't need a third one but what i'm saying is man they was in our face with this men in black ish like it's a joke or whatever oh, look at this but man that shit might be real let's go In 2003, a Navy SEAL team was dispatched from McMurdo Base to the Beardmore Glacier region. Officially, they were doing routine reconnaissance. Unofficially, it was an extraction operation. The team was to find a scientist, gather his research, and return him to base. The SEAL team commander was codenamed Spartan One. It was made very clear to him and his team that the research was extremely important and had to be protected at all costs. Now, of course, Spartan One agreed, but this was an odd request. As far as they knew, this researcher was just some scientists taking pictures of a glacier. And that was true, but it was much more than that. As the SEAL team approached their destination, they saw the top of a black octagon. It was protruding about 18 feet above the melting ice and snow. Hmm. Spartan One approached and saw a huge door. It was 23 feet high and had markings that he thought looked like a star map. Also engraved in the door was a triangle with two lines crossing through the center. This is a symbol that's popped up in various places around the world throughout history. 
Journalist Linda Moulton Howe, who interviewed Spartan One and other witnesses, showed him the picture of a coin found in Mexico City in 1993. It had the same markings. Have you ever seen anything like that? Well, that was on the outside of the door of the structure, the top right-hand corner of the door. Spartan One gently pushed on the door. It was over 20 feet tall and 18 feet thick. It opened easily. It was perfectly balanced. The SEAL team entered the building. The external temperature was 40 degrees below zero. Inside the building, the temperature varied between 68 and 72 degrees. The door gently closed behind them, leaving the team in eerie silence. And the room was huge. It covered nine acres, almost 400,000 square feet. The room was as long as seven football fields. It took Spartan One and his team quite a while to walk the length of the hallway. The walls were generating a soft lime green light, though they couldn't see how. It was as if the light was coming from the walls themselves. And on the walls were rows and rows of carved characters. Spartan One said they reminded him of Egyptian hieroglyphics or Mayan glyphs, but they definitely weren't either. The SEAL team found their scientists taking pictures and samples of the structure. They asked him how big this place was. He pointed to a ramp at the end of the room. The ramp extended down into the rest of the building. He said in total it covered 62 acres. That's over 2.7 million square feet. It was huge and mostly under the ice. And this was only one of several structures in the area. Now this was 2003. At this time, this giant door was the only way into the structure. But in the years since, other entrances have been found. But the only way to access them is by submarine. Wow. Subs have been going two miles under the ice to enter the structures. And unlike that top room, the facility's lower levels are occupied. And they're not occupied by humans. I knew AJ was finna say that, man. I knew he was gonna say that, y'all. Like, man, I know I know I have said this like a thousand times in this video. I do believe in some freaking aliens in Antarctica. I don't I don't know if they like live there, you know what I'm saying? Under the ice. Maybe they just visit, or maybe they have visited and there's evidence as far as like the skeletons and stuff. But this freaking place, wherever in Antarctica, was big as hell. Like this is a huge facility. And I know it got to be some crazy stuff in there, my brothers and sisters. Over 2,000 something something or uh, 90 acres. Like this place was freaking huge, man. Let's let's find out what's on it there. Brian's odd rescue mission of the disappearing scientists wasn't his first experience with Antarctica's high strangeness. In the early 1980s, his C-130 crew flew lots of missions over Antarctica. These were usually trips to resupply research stations and transport cargo and personnel, mostly routine stuff. He called them milk runs. Then one mission changed everything. Brian received word his crew was to prepare for the emergency transport of an injured scientist at Davis Station on the opposite side of Antarctica. After taking on additional medical staff at McMurdo Station, they set course for the Trans-Antarctic Mountains. Approaching the South Pole, Brian noticed his navigator plotting an unusual course. He was heading straight over a remote camp labeled Air Sampling Station. It was a no-fly zone, so off-limits to planes. But with a life on the line, the crew violated the no-fly zone. As the plane gained altitude, Brian saw something he would never forget. What? There was a 300 foot wide hole carved in the ice. There were tracks all over the area and tracks extending down inside the hole. 
There was clearly a lot of activity around this air sampling station. Brian and his crew didn't understand why there was so much secrecy over an ice hole in the middle of nowhere. You stay away from that afarging ice hole, you asparging a sneaky bastard. Jot it dangerously? Yeah, I, I got it. After delivering their patients safely to McMurdo, the crew was summoned to the commander's office. I was summoned to the commander's office once, human. Once. Enough with the Johnny Dangerously references, okay? In the room was an officer they'd never seen before. Also present were two men dressed in suits. Men in black. Yep. Men in black. Again. Yep. The new officer asked about the decision to violate the no-fly zone. The crew explained they had no choice. The patient would have died if they had to fly all the way around. Then the officer just started slowly pacing back and forth, thinking to himself. Finally, he looked at the men in suits, who stepped forward. They said, okay, gentlemen, what you saw, you did not see. You were not over that area. You will never go over that area. You will never, ever talk about this ever again. Understood? The crew agreed. Brian's been retired from the Navy for a few years, and even though he's never signed a non-disclosure agreement, he's still not comfortable giving his full name. Smart. He was with the Navy for years and flew hundreds of missions in Antarctica. He saw silver UFOs on many occasions, as did other flight crews. It was such a common occurrence that it became routine banter at the mess hall. Brian didn't think much of the incident until a few months later. He was assigned to fly a group of scientists to the dome at the South Pole. The dome was decommissioned in 2010, but at the time there were other buildings inside the dome. Obviously offices and labs, but there was also a galley. Brian was in the galley one day and overheard some civilians talking about the infamous air sampling station. You know, the one in the no-fly zone with the giant an ice hole. <laughs> a giant hole in the ice, yes. The civilians were saying that they were going back out there to meet some visitors. Brian heard other crews saying similar things. They were taking people to the hole at the South Pole to talk with visitors. Finally, Brian asked what they meant by visitors. What do you mean by visitors? And he said, well, my impression was that they weren't human. I said, human? You know, I said, what are you talking about? He says, it seemed to me they were talking about like an extraterrestrial or an alien because they didn't refer to them as a person. It was a visitor. That, that's the only thing it can mean is freaking aliens. Because who would freaking talk about a visitor and what, what a visitor on Antarctica? You just don't have random people coming, random people coming to an article, man. And article, I can't even goddamn speak correctly right now. You just don't have random freaking people come to an article, y'all. That has to be freaking aliens. That's the only randomness that's going to come to an article. That, man, listen, y'all. This one here crazy, man. This one here is definitely crazy. The rumors had been circulating for years. That 300-foot hole in the ice is an entrance to a base. A base where humans and aliens are cooperating on some type of project. What the project is or was, we don't know. This was the 1990s. But now we have Google Earth. The military is doing their best to cover up their activity in Antarctica, but there are some photographs that they just can't explain. And I'm glad we about to get into this because cause that's one thing, you know, how at the end of the video, uh, at the end of the video, AJ, he explained like he kind of debunked the whole story of what we watching. You know, he give the he plays devil advocate, so to speak, and give the other side of it, the spectrum. That's one thing I was going to say, y'all. We're in 2024 now. All these people claiming that they seen this and seen that and visited this and visited that. Man, you got a perfectly uh 14p 4k 1440p 4k device in your phone camera in your phone so we need to start seeing some real clear pictures of all this craziness that these people be claiming now i'm just saying that shit used to work back in the day that shit used to work back in the day before we had cameras just available to us in literally a second. You pull out your iPhone before you even open the home, to open the damn lock screen, you can just click on the uh, camera uh, icon and it just pop up. You know what I'm saying? It is so easily, in a snap of a finger, accessible now. So, 
All these people. Now, I don't need nobody in 2024 claiming they seen aliens and you didn't take a picture of it. That's all I'm saying, man. We we can do that now. So I want to see what these pictures look like. But nowadays, that whole thing don't fly no more, man. If you seeing aliens and stuff, dude, pull out your phone and take a picture and give us some real evidence. And I need that shit in HD because your iPhone can do it. Let's go. In 2007, a very suspicious image appeared on Google Earth. It's a cave entrance that seems to have stairs leading to it. The ground around the entrance is discolored, as if machinery or equipment was moving in and out. The opening is about 250 feet wide. A few months after the image was released, it disappeared from Google Earth. Then sometime around 2019 or 2020, the cave entrance reappeared. But this time it doesn't look much like an entrance. In fact, even though this photo is 10 years newer, the resolution is worse. We see better detail in the older image. That's suspicious and feels like a cover-up. Yeah. And speaking of cover-ups, a very interesting story appeared in the Free Republic News on April 13th, 2002. The headline read, U.S. denies spectacular ruins in Antarctica captured on video. What? Well, here's what happened. A TV crew for a production company called Atlantis TV went to Antarctica. They were investigating a massive archaeological dig rumored to be happening two miles beneath the ice. Well, the crew disappeared. Yeah, I saw that coming. But Navy rescuers found their camp and some of their equipment. Among the items found was a videotape. Mm. Two Navy officers showed the footage to scientists when they returned to McMurdo Base. What they saw on the tape was, now here's the quote, they said it showed spectacular ruins and other things they couldn't go into. A secret U.S. military expedition apparently discovered an ancient pyramid temple complex two miles beneath the ice. So pyramids are showing up again. By wow. the way, the U.S. military blocked the tape from being released. Atlantis TV sued to get their property back. They didn't win. As far as I can tell, they went out of business a few years ago. Other odd images have been spotted on Google Earth. Like this one of what appears to be an alien face. Ah, that's like the face on Mars. It reminds yeah. me of that too. Hell yeah, that remind me of the face on Mars, y'all. I think that was probably the first The Wi Files reaction video I did. If y'all ain't checked that out, go back through the playlist and find that one because it's crazy as hell, too. But how in the hell do, like, it, that's just not a coincidence for me, man. Stuff like that is just not a coincidence, y'all, for that freaking formation to happen and they got eyes, a nose, a mouth. You know what I'm saying? Like, how is it so... I don't know, man. I just feel like some stuff is actually something. It's telling us something. You know what I'm saying, man? It just ain't happened. No, somebody did it. But let's go. Then there's this photo of what looks like a spaceship that crash-landed. People have mentioned the shape of it looks similar to Oumuamua. Uh, Oumuamua was first spotted in October 2017. It's the first known interstellar object to pass through our solar system. Its name means scout or messenger in Hawaiian. What made Oumuamua strange were its shape and the way it moved. It was about 400 feet long and 60 feet wide. This cigar-like shape is unlike any other space object we've ever seen. And somehow, when Oumuamua left our solar system, it accelerated. This shouldn't have happened. There are rumors that a secret mission went to Oumuamua and said it was a derelict spacecraft. If that's true, then it could be a probe, one of many flying around our galaxy, perhaps from an alien race looking for planets with life. Or planets to conquer. Well, there's always that risk. Aliens will discover our planet rich in resources and want it for themselves. But according to witnesses, documents, and images of Antarctica, the aliens are already here. And they have been for a very, very long time. Long time. There are so many stories, rumors, and legends about Antarctica that it's impossible to cover them all in one video. 
If you want me to go into detail on any of today's stories or any others, let me know. There is a lot of material out there. Now today we focused on the Younger Dryas impact theory, which moved Antarctica to a different position. We covered the caves and a few photo anomalies. We talked about the Navy SEAL who actually entered an alien facility. And we talked about Brian, the Navy pilot, who saw UFOs and the- Yeah, and the giant fucking ice hole. Right, the 300 foot wide hole in the ice. Fine, what's true and what isn't? Well, Brian's story is tricky. There is no photograph that we know of, of that hole in the ice. As far as I can find, there are no other whistleblowers. Whoever the missing scientists were, they're not talking. Now, Brian sounds sincere, but still, I'd take his story with a grain of salt. But Brian's reports of UFOs zipping around Antarctica are confirmed by multiple witnesses. Mm. UFOs are down there. I have no doubt about that. That is a huge claim for AJ to make because we at the end of the video, y'all, where well, he keeping it real now and he debunking all the bullshit. You know what I'm saying? But that dude just said, man, that he really do think UFOs are down there. And God damn it, earlier I told y'all that too. I really do think it's something going on down there, man. Let's go. But the photos of the pyramids are also tricky. Some look like nothing more than pointy rocks but there are a few that definitely look man-made. Or alien-made. Right. Now, I'd be interested to know if they have eight sides like the Pyramid of Giza, but I couldn't tell from the photographs. The face, I'm convinced that's just pareidolia. Pareidolia is when our brains see objects in random patterns, but I have to admit that definitely looks like an alien face. I don't think it is, but I'd love to be wrong. I don't think that's an alien face. I'm just saying, man, it's a coincidence. How big of a coincidence that it, it looked like a face? That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying who face it is. I'm just saying, man, that is crazy. Now, according to mainstream science, the crash-landed spaceship is a boulder that rolled down a hill or a piece of ice or rock that slid down a hill. Now, at first, this sounds ridiculous, but we rarely see the full image. In the full image, like this one from Forbes, you can actually see the outcropping where the boulder came from. So this one's probably debunked. Next, the Navy SEAL who found and entered the alien structure. Again, he's the only one telling the story. He won't give his name or what SEAL team he's with. So again, all we have to go on is his word. Now, by the way, a lot of today's information comes from a documentary by Linda Moulton Howe. It's called Antarctica Alien Secrets Beneath the Ice. You can rent it on Amazon for four bucks, and it's worth every penny. In the documentary, the whistleblowers go into much more detail. They make sketches about what they saw. They talk about the stargates all over the planet that can take you someplace instantly. Some stargates can take you to other planets instantly. Anyway, I link to her doc below. Now, as you know, I'm normally very skeptical of stories where we only have one witness. But Antarctica is a strange place and I'm sure things are happening down there that are being hidden from the public. Now, the only way to access Antarctica is with permission from one of 12 government signatories of the Antarctic Treaty signed in 1959. This treaty divides the continent into zones administered by the various governments. It's a continent larger than the United States and you're not allowed to go there. Now, there will be people in the comments saying, of course you can go there. You can take cruises there. You can even arrange to stay at one of the outposts. All that's true. But these are designated areas. Let's say you had the resources to fly a plane to where the hole is supposed to be. You can't. Thousands of square miles around it is a no-fly zone. You cannot explore Antarctica on your own. Now, the official reason for this is that human activity would disrupt the ecosystem. Now, that's a convenient excuse. Most of the surface is dead. There is no ecosystem. Besi That's what I was about to say, man. That is a bullshit ass excuse to me. Like, what the fuck? And come on, bro. Come on, y'all, my brothers and sisters. Why is it a no fly zone in that article? That, like AJ just said, that shit is fucking dead, man. There's no ecosystem, dude. So why are there no fly zones? If you really just sit back and just think about it, what's the only possible reason? Freaking aliens. <laughs> I'm just saying, man, let's go. Besides, I don't care about the surface. I want to know what's underneath the ice. They're not going to tell us. The Antarctic Treaty was signed in December 1959 at the height of the Cold War, and it's never been broken. 
Now, I've heard that World War III will not come from a conflict near Russia or from something happening in the Middle East. World War III will occur when someone breaks the Antarctic Treaty. Mm. And if any of these whistleblowers are telling the truth, the United States already has broken the treaty. They claim major archaeological projects are underway right now miles below the ice. But maybe the treaty hasn't been broken. Maybe all the governments are working together to uncover something. Or they're working with, as Brian claims, several species of aliens right now. Now, could there be ancient civilizations buried under the ice, frozen in time like the city of Pompeii? Sure, but until we're allowed to dig, we'll never know. But could there be an active civilization beneath the ice? Scientifically speaking, absolutely there could. Antarctica is the most volcanically active place on Earth. Geothermal heat could provide fresh water and a very comfortable climate for life, intelligent life, and not in small pockets. There are caverns beneath the ice that are said to be larger than Manhattan Island. Damn. Now we'll never know until we're allowed to dig, which we'll never be allowed to do. Hmm. But here's a small wrinkle, global warming. Here we go again with the global warming myth. It's not a myth, the earth is warming. Whether it's because of human activity or just part of the earth's natural cycle, we don't know, but the earth is warming. How dare you? So whether by pollution, an asteroid impact, or a massive solar event, there is a chance the Earth could warm quickly, like during the Younger Dryas. Then Antarctica would be free of ice, as it once was. Then the entire Earth would experience another cataclysmic flood. And if there is a civilization beneath Antarctica, it would be revealed. Now if this global disaster happens, I guess there is a bright side. Civilization will continue. It just won't be ours. Mm. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. AJ said something at the end, y'all. Like it, it, it may be a, it, it may be a possibility that Antarctica basically uh melts. Long story, short story, long. You know what I'm saying? Where the civilizations underground be revealed. But if that was to happen, we'll be dead because the earth will flood again, man. Imagine all that ice on goddamn Antarctica freaking melting. Dude, that would cause a flood like no other. That would be a flood like Noah's Ark flood. Man, that would be crazy, man. I don't think we'll all survive. So while that civilization being revealed, ours will freaking die. It's crazy, man. This was just a crazy video all around. And I just, I still just feel like there are so many mysteries. I feel the same way before we started this video, y'all. There's some going on in Antarctica. I, I feel that same way. It was great to hear AJ say that he, because this dude is smart as fuck, man. Let's just keep it real. This dude is one of the, he's a freaking genius, man. Like, and he know a lot about all this interesting, crazy conspiracy theory type of stuff, man. If you watch his channel, the dude is very freaking educated in this field of this craziness. And I say all that to say I believe him and it helped me make me feel like I'm not crazy when I say that there are alien activities going on in Antarctica. Like point blank period, man. Like I said, man, why is there a no fly zone in Antarctica? Antarctica, a no fly zone? Really? Why? What are they trying to freaking hide, y'all? They got to be trying to hide something. There is not nothing in Antarctica. There ain't shit in Antarctica. So why the hell is it a no-fly zone? I cannot leave that point alone, my brothers and sisters. I bet y'all said I've been turned this whole goddamn video. I don't know why I'm so turnt, y'all. I, I, I honestly don't know why I'm so freaking turnt with this one, man. I don't know, y'all. I just love coming back to AJ. I love coming back to y'all, man. This one right here, dude, is it's so many theory you, theories you can come up with as far as what's going on with Antarctica. And one other thing that AJ was talking about with the whistleblowers, it was only one of them, you know what I'm saying, saying this, but nobody else came out and said it. So I don't know if I really believe them, but you got images of the freaking 
what look like pyramids you got the image of the face you know what i'm saying now the one thing i didn't really think was the uh the aircraft that looked like it had crash landed now i don't think that was an aircraft i think that's probably like a big ass boulder or something that fell or a piece of the rock that fell off and just slid down and left a big ass track i really don't look too much into that but this freaking no fly zone my brothers and sisters that is the major thing man that is the one thing that just got me like hmm why can't we fly that part like aj said man us me you we could yeah we can book a flight to antarctica but we only can go certain places why in the hell we can't goddamn look at anything on antarctica it ain't shit there so why we can't look at it and i'm gonna go let y'all go my brother and sister because I'm, I'm i'm starting to repeat my damn self but i'm just trying to get my point across y'all i'm just trying to get my point across but i'm finna go and let y'all go man this was a great fucking video man i appreciate y'all being here as always make sure y'all hit that like button y'all comment subscribe if you ain't yet and remember this Love, peace, and happiness. Stay safe. Don't stop. Keep going. Yeah.